broke and reached him a flasson de grave. He emptied it at a breath. His eyes flashed with a fierce light. He laughed and threw the bottle upwards with a gesture. I did not understand. I looked at him in surprise. A gro he repeated the movement. A grotesque one. <laughs> you do not uh, uh, comprehend, he said. Not I, I replied. Then you are not of the Brotherhood. How? You are not of the Masons. Yes, yes, I said. Yes, yes. You? Impossible. A Mason? A Mason, I replied. A sign, he said. It is this. I answered, producing a trowel from beneath the folds of my roquelaire. You jest, he exclaimed, coiling, coiling a few faces. faces. But let us proceed to the Amontillado. <laughs> Be it so, I said, replacing the tool beneath the cloak, Ooh, the tool, and, and again offering him my arm. He leaned upon it heavily. Uh, we continued our route in search of the Amontillado. We passed through. We passed through a range of low arches, descended, passed on, and descending again, arriving at a deep crypt, in which the foulness of the air caused our flambeau rather to glow than flame. At the remote end of the crypt, there appeared another, less spacious. It had walls lined with human remains, piled to the vault overhead, in the fashion of the great catacombs of Paris. Three sides of this interior crypt were still ornamented in this manner. From the fourth, the bones had been thrown down and laid promiscuously upon the earth, forming at one point a mound of some size. Within the wall, thus exposed by the displacing of the bones, we perceived a still interior recess. In depth, about four feet. In width, three. In height, six or seven. It seemed to have been constructed for no special use in itself, but formed nearly the interval between two colossal supports of the roof of the catacombs, and was backed by their subscribing walls of solid granite. It was in vain that Fortunato, uplifting his torch, endeavored to pry into the depths of the recess. Its termination, the feeble light, did not enable us to see. Proceed, I said. Herein is the Amontillado. As for Lucchesi, uh, he's an ignoramus, interrupted my friend, and he stepped unsteadily forward, while I immediately followed at his heels. In an instant, he had reached the extremity of the niche, and finding his progress arrested by the rock, stood stupidly bewildered. <laughs> <laughs> A moment more, and I had fettered him to the granite. In its surface were two iron staples distant from each other, about two feet horizontally. From one of these depended a short chain, and the other a paddle. Throwing the links around his waist, it was but the work of a few seconds to secure it. He was much too astounded to resist. Withdrawing the key, I stepped back from the recess. Pass your hand over the wall. You cannot help feeling the nitra. Indeed, it is very damp. Once more, let me implore you to return. No? Then I must positively leave you. But I must first render you all the little attentions in my power. The, um, the Montiato! ejaculated my friend, not yet recovered from his astonishment. True, I replied, the Amontillado. As I said these words, I buried myself among the piles of bones from which I had before spoken. Throwing them aside, I soon uncovered a quantity of building stone and mortar. With these materials, and with the aid of my trowel, I soon began, sorry, 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 I soon began vigorously to wall up the entrance of the niche. I had scarcely laid the first tier of, of masonry when I discovered that the intoxication of Fortunato had, in a great measure, worn off. The earliest indication that I had of this was a low, moaning cry <laughs> in the depths of the recess. It was not the cry of a drunken man. 
Then there's a long, obstinate silence. I lay at the second tier, and the third, and the fourth, and I heard the furious vibrations of the chain. The noise lasted for several minutes, during which, that I might hearken to it with the more satisfaction, I ceased my labors and sat down upon the bones. When at last the clanking subsided, I resumed the trowel and finished without interruption the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh tier. The wall was now nearly upon a level with my breast. I again paused, and holding the flambeau over the mason work, I threw a few feeble rays upon the figure within. A succession of loud screams bursting suddenly from the throat of the chain form. <laughs> I reapproached the wall. I replied to the yell of the came who clamored. Ah! 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 I re-echoed. I ate it. I surpassed them in volume and strength. I did this, and the clamorer grew still. It was now midnight, and my task was drawing to a close. I had completed the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth tier. I had finished a portion of the eleventh tier. There remained but a single stone to be fitted and plastered in. I struggled with its weight. I placed it partially in its destined position. But now there came from out of the niche a low laugh <laughs> that erected the hairs upon my head. <laughs> it was succeeded by a sad voice, which I had difficulty in recognizing that of the noble Fortunato. The voice said, <laughs> A very good joke indeed. Uh, an excellent test. Uh, we will have many a rich laugh about it at Palazzo. <laughs> uh, over our wine. <laughs> ah, the Amontillado, I said. Ah, uh, yes, the Amontillado. But is it not getting late? Will not they be awaiting us at the Palazzo, and the Lady Fortunato, and the rest? Let us be gone? Yes. I said, let us be gone. For the love of God, Montresor! Yes, I said, for the love of God. But to these words I hearkened in vain for a reply. I grew impatient. I called aloud, Fortunato? No answer. I called again, Fortunato? No answer still. I thrust a torch through the remaining aperture and let it fall within. There came forth in return only a jingling of the bells. My heart grew sick on account of the dampness of the catacombs. I hastened to make an end to my labor. I forced the last stone into its position. I plastered it up. Against the new masonry, I re-erected the old rampart of bones. For the half of a century, no mortal has disturbed them. In pace requiescat. Wait, you kill them? Now is when you release them. Yay! Yeah! This is not what you kill them.